Hi, folks. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today, I'm super excited because we have with us an author and a TED Talk speaker as well. Her name is Linda A. Olson. And just to give you a little background about who she is and what we're going to be covering today, Linda Olson is an international speaker and a very sought after story expert. She's also the founder and CEO of Wealth Through Stories. And of course, I'll post her website for you. This former dean, marriage and family therapist and award-winning entrepreneur combines decades of public speaking and writing experience with her own moving story to form the basis of her book, Your Story Matters, Own Your Story and Tell It with Clarity, Confidence and Impact. So today I'm super excited to be able to speak with Linda. Linda, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Awesome. So what I want to do is I, I definitely want to cover a lot of the topics in your book, but let's get started with first explaining what drove you to, you know, create your story and, and of course, you know, realize that it has meaning and value to people. So if you could just give us some of the events that unfolded that took you to where you are today. Okay, now you're taking me through a long journey, <laughs> and I'm going to try and do this in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, it really takes me back to my story, which started as a young girl, 14 years of age, through a tractor accident. My precious two-year-old brother was killed. I was the one driving the tractor. So as you can only imagine, that was a long journey to healing, a very long journey. And when I came to that place of complete healing, something about story just intrigued me, just the idea of story. I mean, if somebody had asked me a few years prior to that what my story was, I probably would have said, I don't think I have one. But when I came to complete healing, I began uh, thinking a lot about and doing some research on story. And I thought, if story is so important, why aren't we all telling our stories every day? And I realized there are three key things. One is most people don't think they have a story. Uh -huh. Secondly, if they could come up with something, they don't think others are really interested in hearing it. And thirdly, they would have no idea how to tell it. And somehow I knew for me at that point, that was my new calling to help people find, create, and tell their stories. And how long have you been at this? Well, uh, it, it's kind of interesting. As I looked back and realized as a marriage and family therapist and other careers that I've had, that I've been helping people with their stories for more than 40 years. But this particular end of it, oh, realistically, I would say for the last uh, five, five and a half years. Wow. And I'm sure a lot of people are discovering just how um, important it is to find their story. And that's where your book comes in. So um, in your book, Your Story Matters, you say that this book will show you how to trust, explore and share a part of yourself that is hidden so that you can quickly and easily tell a story in a way that will impact and transform more lives than you can imagine. Can you tell us why it's essential for us to know our story and how do we begin to share it? Very good question. You know, uh, <clears throat> one of the most important things is uh, I believe that story is the number one way we connect with people. And so today, you know, um, entrepreneurship, business, everything is all based on relationship. So if we can connect through story, then we can build a relationship quickly. And all relationship is really based on trust. And so that's the whole idea is to build trust through story. And story is also the way that we experience each other. As you share your story, I get to experience part of you. And as I share mine, you get to experience me. 
And it's through experience that we remember more than anything else. Now, do people have multiple stories or do they have, do you recommend people have multiple stories or do they have like one global story? How does that work? Well, I believe that story, there are several different levels of story. You know, our life is made up of thousands, perhaps millions of stories. Stories unfold every day. And those are what I call our everyday stories. Then there are those events, circumstances, and times in our life where um, it's changed our mindset, it's changed something about us, and those that's what I call our turning point stories. And then there are times where it may be one big story that really follows the theme. Uh, the theme of our life is really based on one big story, which is kind of really the story that I just shared about. I call that our signature story. So, yes, we have many stories, many stories. And the ones that <clears throat> I believe we learn the most from is really our turning point stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is telling your story healing and what makes a story worth telling? Well, <clears throat> a story is healing if, of course, we have to be healed through our story. There's a principle that says we cannot give what we do not have. Mm -hmm. And so as we have been healed through our story, and it doesn't have to be that big signature story, it could be a turning point story. But as we have learned something through the process, overcome something, then we can help someone else with that. And uh, a big part of this has to do with the purpose of story. You know, we think, well, this is our story. I'm just sharing our story. No, to me, the real purpose of story is about helping someone else with, whether, with wherever they're at. And that's where it becomes real significant. That's where it becomes healing for others. It's identifying with them, coming alongside their pain, their problem, their conflict whatever that would be. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, why is connecting with others through our story important? Like, how do we know that others are interested in hearing our story? I think that's a big roadblock with a lot of folks. They feel they don't want to impose on other people so they can have wonderful stories to tell, um, but they don't because they don't want to like impose on other people. Not everyone is going to write a book, right, to tell their story, but they can still tell their story, correct? Absolutely. How, and <clears throat> how do I they think, not impose on other people? You know, I think if we look at going back to that idea of the purpose of story, that if the purpose of story is about helping someone else, it's about serving, then we're not imposing. If we are genuinely helping them or serving. And very often that's more of a, um, it's more of a value issue that maybe I don't think my story is important enough and what difference would it make if I shared it with so-and-so mm -hmm. and, you know, that kind of thing. But the thing is, if we are truly helping someone, coming alongside them and identifying with their pain, and let them know it's all about them. It could be as simple as, as you're having a conversation and you ask them permission and say, you know what, are you okay if I just take a minute and share a little bit about my story? And of course they're gonna say yes, but the fact that this is about them is why we can ask permission and say, well, you know what, when I was going through this career change or whatever that may be, I faced a lot of fear as well, especially if you recognize that this person is going through a lot of fear and it's as simple as that. So one of the main goals in sharing your story is to like influence and help others, correct? Absolutely. Influence, impact. And when you get really good at story, you can learn to transform lives. 
I mean, I, I can't think of anything more exciting than that. Yes. How does one start to discover their story? What if it's too painful for them to tell? Like, what if they know they have a valuable story, but it's so very painful? How does one get to that place where they can tell their story? Well, that is a very good question. That often, especially the big stories, are very painful. And if we have not worked through enough of that pain, then it's probably best to hold off on sharing that story. But like I said earlier, our life has many, many stories. So then we go to a story that we do know we have received healing and we have overcome and we share that story or we share others, we may not be ready to go to that, you know, that very painful one. When we are, that's wonderful to get there. But that's often a process and a long journey. Do you recommend um, people that find themselves in a painful situation and want to discover and share um, something good of it? Do you recommend they seek a therapist beforehand? Like, how does that typically work? Yes, I, I truly do recommend that. A therapist, a, a, a coach, uh, a professional, someone who can help them dig deeper into their pain and help them to, to get to a place of recovery. Absolutely. Yes. It does make sense. Now, in today's day and age, especially with a lot of our youth, attention spans are very limited um, and, and the internet is like teaching that modality uh, by making everything two minutes, three minute video. You know, folks just don't read and watch things in length anymore, as you know. How do you approach um, someone with a very short attention span? How do you deal with sharing your story in today's environment? That's a very good question because you're absolutely right. Our attention spans are so short. And so <clears throat> a big part of my training is really helping people take their story, regardless of how big a story it is, and share it within two minutes at the most three minutes. And so, for example, if uh, somebody were to watch my TED Talk, we were given 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. at this, for this TED Talk event. And what I really did, now you wouldn't know that unless you're hearing what I'm saying now, but my TED Talk is really a matter of five or six two-minute stories. And I just weaved them all together and kept and grabbed, grabbed attention and kept attention through story but that's really what it is. So if somebody has a big story, you still share it in two or three minutes, but make that part of the story has a point. For example, if you're a speaker, that part of the story has a point before you move into another part of that story. Mm. And that's that how makes you sense. It. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I also wondered about, uh, I noticed that a lot of the folks I come across, they don't really, and I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer or negative, but they don't really want to hear your story. They want to tell their story. And, and I do run into, I'm sure you do as well. They want to be the one to be telling their story. How do you handle the challenge of, say you meet someone and you, you really want to tell them, you know, you feel comfortable enough to share your story and you really want to tell them, but they want to be the one telling their story. How do you overcome that scenario? Well, a big part of it is uh, <clears throat> I may invite them to share their story and, um, uh, <clears throat> and eventually as I listen to them and draw out their story, Often, they will then turn around at some point and say, oh, my goodness, I've been doing all the talking. I really want to hear 
it's your story too. Very true, very yes. true. Which is great. The hard part comes in when they tell their story and you're thinking, okay, two, three minutes, you know, um, but they're going on and on and on and on. And that can become very awkward. Mm -hmm. And so say you're at a net a networking meeting and someone is going on and on and say, you know, at some point, I really would like to hear more, but there's some other folks I need to meet. And uh, so I'm going to catch up with you later. I like that. You know, yes, something it's like It's a graceful way to like bow out of that situation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, Linda, you also say in your book that every successful story has a pattern. Can you tell us a little bit about the criteria? What makes a successful story so folks can understand? Well, in this pattern or guideline or formula, whatever you want to call it, to me, when you follow it, it is um, the best tool to help hone down our story to really shorten it mm -hmm. and that is it's very simple that is every great story has conflict i mean you know you think about the movies you watch or anything how much conflict is involved in that because it today today's day and age we live in a very broken world that's how we connect with one another so conflict is a key part of story and behind every conflict is a resolution. And so the resolution is the lesson, um, the uh, whatever we have learned through the conflict. So it's conflict resolution. And then the other piece is introduction. Your introduction introduces your conflict and behind every conflict is a resolution. And that conflict, if you were to do this in a basic guide, that conflict is about 50% of your story. 25% is introduction, 50% conflict, and 25% is resolution as a basic guideline. Now, explain more about conflict because in your book, you give a good explanation. When people hear the word conflict, they think of like arguing, you know, like a conflicting moment between people. But it also means more than that, correct? Yes, it doesn't have to be you know, uh, something negative, which is where we often go with that. It can be basically making as simple as making a decision. Do I do this now or do I postpone this until later and focus on this now? So it's really like a decision making. And if you think about that, if you um, I've never done it, but if you trace the number of decisions you make in one day, and considered those decisions as conflicts, I'm sure we would all be amazed because we just do that automatically. Absolutely. We're conflicted about so much in our lives. We, I, I think we just don't think about it. All right. <laughs> so true, so true. So how does a person use this conflict to tell their story? Um, you know, you mapped it out clearly, but how do you take something that was really conflicting for you and turn it into a story worth telling. Okay, so it's really taking a look at uh, through the conflict, through the pain, what, what have you learned through it? What have you overcome? Um, that's a big part of the story. Mm -hmm. So, and then to think about what were, uh, what were the negative emotions triggered in that process? So, for example, let's just say, um, you know, you need to move from the corporate field to entrepreneurship. And that is terrifying for you because you don't know if that's going to work or not. And um, in that process, that probably at least one of the big negative emotions you face is fear. And somehow you go through this process. You're at a networking meeting and someone else is going through that process right now. But you've gone through it several years ago. And so you hear them talking about it. And you might stop and say, you know, I, I do know exactly how you feel. If you don't mind, I'll share a little bit about my story. And of course, they'll say yes. So you know what? When I went through that, I was absolutely terrified. My wife wasn't working. We had two young kids. 
uh, I mean, I just didn't know how on earth it was going to work. Mm -hmm. And then I talked to somebody and they said something that changed everything for me. They basically asked me the question, what is the worst thing that could happen? And I thought, well, you know, I have some savings. If I run out of savings, I can get a part-time job until I can get this entrepreneurship going. And it was like, I realized I faced my fear. And it could be something as simple as that. Now you've identified with your story, you've identified with their fear. In this case, it may be similar kind of story. Mm -hmm. In another case, it could be something entirely different, but the emotion, the negative emotion is similar. Is there. Right, right. Now, do you recommend asking for permission to tell your story or, or is it just better to have it come out naturally? Like what's the best way to go? You know, I think it depends on the situation. If this is, like I said, if this is truly about them, for example, um, if it's if it's your client coming in and this is about them, at that point, I recommend you asking them permission because this is their time and say, you know, would it be all right if I shared a little bit about my story? If you're at a networking meeting and you're just kind of chatting at that point, I would just Probably. Just let it flow. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So how do folks document these stories? Because like you said, we can have one major story and then thousands of other little stories. Do you recommend them journaling? Do you recommend they try to write a book about it? Like what's the best process to be able to, um, you know, have your stories have meaning to share with other people because we're not going to remember a thousand stories that are worth telling either. Here's the best part. You don't have to remember, remember a thousand. If you have three, I usually recommend three, five at the most, key stories that you kind of have in your back pocket. And you can, yes, I do recommend writing them down as a journal and the more you give these and basically it's like well how do you find those stories or how do you know what to choose the key is look at who your target audience is and what their biggest problems are and when you have their biggest problems say what are the key emotions they are facing well, for example, because fear is the number one negative emotion that we all face, that you definitely want to have a story that, uh, that refers to a fear that you went through. So fear would be one. Um, anxiety is often uh, high on the list as well. It could be grief. It could be loss at a time like this. When, you know, everybody is facing some kind of loss, right. that's always good. So even if you had those three, you could relate to almost anybody in the world today. Fear, anxiety, and loss. Uh, if there are other specific, um, it might be grief. Um, it might be loneliness, you know, depending on what your audience faces. And so those are the kind of stories. But yes, like anything, it's it's a skill. So it takes practice. I recommend writing it down. I recommend practicing. I don't care if you start with telling to family or friends uh, before you actually get on a you know a platform, so to speak, and share it. Yes. Um, what do you do if you have a long story? Like, what if your story is lengthy, but it's valuable and it's worth telling? What do folks do? Well, as I mentioned earlier with my TEDx talk, the main thing is you still want to hone it down, hone it down. Okay. Uh, the biggest part where we get into trouble is in trying to hone it down is the details of that story is really important to me. And I think it's important to you, but most of the time it isn't. People get lost in the details. They just want to just want you to get to the point. Yes. So. So it's like, okay, this part, just break it down. This part is the best story for maybe, maybe addressing the fear. And then there's another part that really addressed my loneliness and another part that uh, addressed my anxiety or just not knowing where to go from there. And so the best thing is, yes, hone it down, break it up, 
into short stories. Yeah, I think that's very important. And that's why I loved your book, because it really laid out a nice, you know, framework um, so that folks can understand, you know, not only the value in telling a story, but how to do it. Because at first I was like, well, how do you put a story together and what's the criteria and what are the do's and don'ts kind of thing? But now it makes so much sense, especially after reading your book, which I highly recommend folks do. And of course, I'll put the link in the description where they can pick that up on Amazon. And then you also have a wonderful website. And one thing I loved about your website is you have a YouTube channel and you lay out um, little snippet videos about how to write your story and tell your story. So I will also put a link so folks can check that out as well. And your store, your website is wealththroughstories.com, correct? Yes, it is. And what other services do you offer folks? Do you offer a counseling? Do you have anything else you want to mention? Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, I do offer coaching, whether people are wanting to tell their story or write their story. My mission is to impact a million people a year through story. Nice. And, you know, those are the two two major ways. So, uh, yes, whether it's the YouTube or a video blog, I do that weekly. And then uh, twice a year, I offer a two-day, um, it's called Wealth Through Stories Live. It's a two-day retreat. And it Wonderful. is a fun, fun way to learn the foundation of story. I mean, people come not having any idea if they have a story. They leave very confident, not only that they have a story, but know how to tell it. And where is this retreat? That retreat is actually, I live in, in California. And so it is in uh, Southern California. That's, that's the area. And you can find that on the website. The other thing I just started recently in the last few months is I do five day challenges based on story. So the one coming up is that uh, your, well, I just did one on create a transformational story. So in five days, I will have their, their uh, it's, a, it's a one hour Zoom call each day. Mm -hmm. And we'll take them very basic step by step to do this. And it's fun. Um, usually it's just like $17. And you get, I mean, five hours of solid information on this. Wow. Now, is this with other people as well? Or is this a one-on-one? -on -one? No, this is with a group. A yeah. group of people. It's, yes. Oh, what yeah. fun. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. Yes. And when is your next one? So the next one actually starts um, August 24th. I'm going to have to jump on there. Yes. <laughs> yes, that'd be great. I'd love to have you. That yes. sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, so if anybody wants in for more information on that, uh, they can email me, Linda, yes. at wealththroughstories.com. Yes. Great, and of course, I'll have that running across the screen as well. Well, thank you so much. I am so intrigued by this whole premise of finding your story, telling your story. And your book is, is the kind of book you have to really read twice because there's so many awesome nuggets of information in there so i'm definitely going to be rereading it and i'm going to join in your zoom party as well <laughs> oh good great <laughs> thank you anything yeah. else in closing that you'd like to add that our folks might want to hear well i want them to know above all that whether they feel like it or not they have an important story. Everybody has an important story. And it's not just any story. It's a story that can help transform lives. And we may not feel that right now because, like I said earlier, story is, is a skill. And But there are people like myself that can help draw out that story, find out what it is, and how you can use it. And so I want them to know their story matters. Absolutely. One last question. If for people that don't, because there are a lot of people that are, you know, inhibited and they don't want to tell their story to other people, but they can still use this technique for self-healing, right? So they don't have to tell their story. They can discover it and use it for self-healing, right, Linda? Absolutely. Yes. 
Yes. Great. Good. It's, you know, you got to make sure you cover everyone's bases, right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we all come from different places. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much. And I hope we can speak again in the future. I'm sure you have other books that are just as valuable. And I'd love to talk with you again sometime. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much.